It's open. Come on in. I'll be out in a sec. Is this how high-rolling reporters live nowadays? Hmm? Sorry about that. I haven't been feeling well, as I said. Who's your friend? Is something wrong? Jeremy? Are you dead? I certainly feel sick enough to be dead. I haven't been able to leave the apartment in two days. I just caught a nasty bug or something. Horrible timing. I'm on the verge of something really big. That's why I need your help. You need our help, all right. Sorry, but who are you? I'm with her. This is Joey. He's kind of my... partner. I see. So you two are... No, oh, no, uh, nothing like that. I mean, a writing partner. Oh, good. I mean, that's good. Partners are good. Well, it's nice to meet you, Joey. I like the hat. Anyway, how about we get down to business? Are you sure there's nothing else wrong with you? It's just the flu. Nothing to worry about. I'll be fine in a few days. I just want to get this article submitted before it's too late. All right, Jeremy, tell me about this article of yours. Brilliant. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Do you know where the City Post news office is? I think so. This flu is making it hard to remember everything, but I kept pretty good notes. Just go up there and tell them I sent you. My notebook is on my desk. I go myself, but I'm not exactly up to snuff. Snuff is the word. Joey! What? So what do you say? Will you help me? Yes, of course I'll help. It's what I do. So, Jeremy, we never got much of a Me? Um, I was born upstate, moved here after college, wrote freelance for a bunch of papers, including the Village Eye. Not much else to tell, really. Are you sure? This flu. Oh. Well, I better get going. Thanks. I really appreciate this, Rosangela. Yeah, look. You can call me Rosa. All right. Rosa it is, then. Oh my god. Is that me? I mean, us? Yeah. You remember the 05 Christmas party? Yeah, that was a while ago. I was going through some old pictures when I came across yours. That's why I thought to call you. I see. This was really five years ago? I barely remember it. It's Jeremy, back when he was alive. I don't even remember getting this picture taken. Ugh, what a horrible picture of me. Hey, look, before you go, I just want to, well, apologize. I know it's a bit weird calling you up and asking you such a big favor like this. Don't worry about it. Well, when I'm over this flu, I'll make it up to you. I promise. No, you don't have to do that, really. Just, just take care of yourself. Well, that was unexpected. Yeah, I suppose. You know where that newspaper office is? Yeah. Then let's hop to it. Could I help you? What do you know about Jeremy Sams? Jeremy? He works here. His office is just up there on the second floor, but I haven't seen him in a few days. So you don't know where he is now? I have no idea. If you'd like to leave him a message, I'll let him know you stopped by. I was told you'd be expecting me. My name is Rosangela Blackwell. Sorry, I wasn't told anything. Really? I need to go inside and pick up some notes. Sorry, but if you don't have permission to be here, I can't let you in. I really do need to... No, I... 
Do you know anything? Huh? Jeremy's death. I'm kind of looking into it. Jeremy's dead? Are you serious? You mean you don't know? Of course not. What happened to him? I'm not sure. What do you mean you're not sure? How did he die? What happened? I don't know. Where is he now? I don't know. Right. This is sick. I think you should get out of here before I call security. That's my girl, making friends wherever she goes. I'll be going, I guess. Bye. Excuse me, officer? It's Detective. Detective Durkin. And you shouldn't be up here at this hour. Did something happen here? No, I'm doing street art. Of course something happened. You should run along home. You don't want the same thing to happen to you. Someone died, didn't they? Gee, what tipped you off? Believe me when I say you don't want to be involved. Could you tell me who it was? Couldn't, even if I wanted to, because we don't know. So it's, uh, what do you call it, a uh, John Doe? Yeah, sure, whatever. I think I know who the victim was. You do, huh? His name was Jeremy Sams. And how do you know this? I just do. You just do. Yes. What is it about Pox that brings out all the crazies? I'm positive the victim is- You wanna come- You know how crazy you sound? I do. You come out of nowhere, and say you- Yeah, sounds crazy. Even if you could ID the guy, it wouldn't hold up. Right. I'll be back. It's a free country. Come on in! Oh! Hi, Rosa. Make yourself at home. Jeremy, could I have this photo? Really? You want it? If it's okay. Sure. I've, I've got, got copies, copies somewhere. somewhere. Go right, right ahead. ahead. Thanks. Is this the same man you found? Let me see that. That's him, all right. What did you say his name was? Jeremy Sams. Jeremy Sams. And what's your relation to him? We used to work together. Hmm. You know any of his family? Anyone we can notify or speak to? I know he was a reporter for the City Post. Right. I'll give him a call. And we're gonna have to follow up with you, too. You got a number? Here's my card. Spiritual services, huh? Why do I always end up with the nuts? Anyway, right. Good night. Don't stay up here too long. It ain't safe. Um, you're welcome? It's you. I just got off the phone with the police. You were right. Jeremy is really dead. I just saw him two days ago. He was always nice to me. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. About before, I was a complete jerk. Why didn't you say it was murder? I wasn't sure at the time. Police seemed pretty sure. You said you were investigating his death? Yes. I wanted to take a look at his desk. Right. I'll buzz you in. The place is empty. I'm just here holding the phones. Take as much time as you need. Just find whoever did this, okay? I'll do my best. All right, Jeremy. What were you up to? Let's see if it was worth getting killed over. According to this, Jeremy interviewed a woman named Penelope Haynes. Looks like Jeremy tried to speak to someone named Penelope Haynes over the phone. A definite connection. Connection to what? It says that Jeremy followed up with someone, and whoever it was tried to scam him. Jeremy lost his phone somewhere. I wonder if anyone found it.
Hi, Rosa. Hi, Rosa. Make, Make yourself, yourself at home. home. Jeremy? Yes? yes? I got your notebook. You are a rock star. Here you go. Take it. Right. On second thought, could you read it out to me? This flu is making me a bit fuzzy. I'm having trouble focusing my eyes. Are you sure? Yes. Please. Sure, Jeremy. Thank you. You wrote about someone named Penelope Haynes. Penelope Haynes, yeah. She's an interesting case. She's a victim, but doesn't believe she's a victim at all. She embraces it. I wish it was uncommon, but unfortunately it's not. What do you mean? God, my head. It's like thinking through a straw. Penelope, she's the weak link. She's a talker. Most people don't like to talk about this kind of thing, but she does. Talk about what? It's hard to explain. Why don't you try us? No. I'm just really sick, okay? I can't think straight. Of course, you're sick. I understand. Thank you. But I do need more to go on. Speak to Penelope. She lives up on Park Avenue. She's a bit old, so be patient with her. Is there anything else? Have you been up to? No, not. Go pay her a visit. Did you hear the somebody with that's? that's but but hey, hey, somebody else is gone. So we never. Me? Not. Well, I better get going. All right. All right. Thanks, Thanks again, again, Rosa. Yes? Penelope Haynes? I'm Madison Haynes. Penelope is my mother-in-law. Can I help you? She had a visit from a reporter not too long ago, a Jeremy Sams from the City Post. Oh, you're with them. Come in. <laughs> Sorry, but you're out of luck. She no longer lives here. She's not dead, is she? What? No! What gave you that idea? I, well, never mind. It was a stupid question. You said it, not me. Where did she go? Where she can be taken care of. She's quite elderly. A nice enough woman, but needed a lot of looking after. As you can see, we just had a child. I couldn't look after both of them. Not if I wanted to keep my sanity. So she's in a nursing home? An assisted living center, yes. Could you tell me what- I don't think that- When your friend from the newspaper came, she became quite agitated. She was always a little unstable, but she became much worse. I don't know what you want with her, but I don't think I should tell you where she is. What did Jeremy speak to Penelope about? You don't know? Aren't you from the paper too? Not exactly. Jeremy is, uh, ill. I'm following up on his interviews, trying to learn what he did. I see. Well, I don't know what they spoke about. He spoke to her privately in her room just over there. That's a cute kid you've got there. Thanks. His name is Chris. He's about eight months old now. He's a little terror, but <laughs> he's mine. Well, thanks for the chat. I might be back to follow up. I don't really have anything else to tell you, but bye. It's a brochure. It looks like it's for a nursing home. The place is called Seagram Assisted Living, and it's got a branch down on East 33rd. Looks like a therm- Not sure what- The numbers on this gizmo went down a bit. It now says 62 degrees. Hmm. You know, Chris, I think it's getting a little hot in here. What do you think? Should we open a door? Yeah, I think so too. There's nothing but a long... So, kid, how's it going? 
Oh, no need to get up. Oh, hey, watch it. <sighs> Chris, where are you going, you little monster? I found out where they stashed the old lady. It's a place called Seagram. Did you get the address? Of course I did. Not sure what I can say. Hi, is this Seagram Assisted Living? You've got the right place. What can I do for you? I'm looking for a Penelope Haynes. Does she stay here? Mrs. Haynes? She spends her time in the common area most days. It's on the second floor, you can't miss it. Thanks. Thanks for the help. Have a good day. <laughs> there, there. It's only visitors. Some old broad. Look at that sad sack. Dying young has one thing going for it at least. I'll never end up like him. Does this belong to anybody? Nobody I know. Help yourself. Penelope Haynes? Hmm? <laughs> oh. Madison. Well, this is a surprise. No, I'm not Madison. You're not? Ah, oh, yes. Sorry, I should have known. Your aura carries a whiff of her essence. I got confused. You said something about an aura? I could see it a mile away. Your aura, my dear, it's been infected by her. Her? The woman who calls herself my daughter-in-law. Bits of her essence have infected your aura like vile worms. Really? No, not really. Don't fall for this. She smells Madison's perfume. I don't have a nose and I could tell she was swimming in it. Madison is a spiritual viper. I was told Jeremy Sams came to talk to you. Oh, that young man? So keen, so interested. He believed. Or he wanted to. He's on his way now, I think. I sent him there. You think Madison is a spiritual viper? The energy. Energy flows into her but doesn't come out. She just cares for material wealth and nothing for her fellow human beings. She's corrupted my son and it's too late for him. But me? I got out. Lucky escape. Where did you send Jeremy? To the next phase, of course. The next phase? There are many worlds, but we have work to do in this one. I... I'm afraid I don't understand. There, there. You're not supposed to. Do you know Jeremy is dead? What? What are you talking about? Jeremy is dead. He was killed a few days ago. Oh. Oh my. That is funny. Pardon? Me going on about sending him on his way to the next world. What you must think of me. Don't worry about it. I sometimes forget that I operate on a higher plane than most people. Still can't be helped. Don't worry about the boy. He has rejoined the universe. What did you and Jeremy speak about? My work, the universe, and my work within the universe. So many people, so many lost. I'm quite important, you know. What kind of work do you do? I meditate. I think. I exist. Really? What more is there? Well, thanks for your time, Mrs. Haynes. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Stop by any time. Girl, Joey, Joey, is that you? 
Huh? Are you talking to me? Hello? Anybody there? Joy. Yeah, that's my name. Do I know you? Uh... I'm afraid he does that sometimes. Talks to people who aren't there. Or perhaps they are. He sees the world through different eyes. Oh, for crying out loud, shut up. Joy. Why? Why did you do it? Are you... No. Not you. Get the elevator, Red. We're leaving. Joey. You really want to have this conversation here? Get the damn elevator. So were you going to tell me? What? Who was that guy? Maybe nobody. Maybe somebody. I don't know. You don't know? No, I don't. If there's something to say, I'll say it. Until then, we got a spook to sort. I told you, there is no reason for you to be here. I spoke to your mother-in-law. You spoke to Penelope? Yes. I told you not to speak to her. No, you said you wouldn't tell me where to find her. I found her anyway. Hmm. Clever girl. And what did she tell you? She doesn't think much of you, that's for sure. <sighs> Come in, shut the door. Let me tell you something about my mother-in-law. She's rich and she's needy. People like her are easy prey for people like him. People like who? People like Gavin. What did this Gavin do? He brainwashed her is what he did. He made her hate us. He told her we were phony and superficial. Okay, we're well off. I can't deny that. But the thing she said? She changed her will. Can you believe that? Left everything to Gavin. Even my husband couldn't look at her anymore. So, we sent her away. Was it a lot of money? Who cares about the money? The money isn't the point. She turned her back on her family, her son, her new grandchild, just because some cult leader told her to. You stick by your family, that's just what you do. So you put Penelope into a nursing home after she changed her will? I know, I know, we're horrible, ungrateful people. Don't think we don't feel guilty about it. But she was impossible to live with, and we have a son to raise. I even gave her a key, and I told her she could visit whenever she liked. Not that she would. She denies we ever gave it to her, even though it's lying in her room for everyone to see. Well, I better get going. Goodbye, then. He's nobody. Why would I want to talk to him? He's nobody. Mrs. Haynes. Oh, it's you. I spoke to Madison about you. Oh, I'd advise against that. Five minutes in her presence will kill a year of your spiritual growth. Did you really cut your family out of your will? Sure I did. What of it? They have everything they need. I'm giving it to a much worthy cause. The work must continue. I can make sure it does. Madison doesn't seem all that bad. You never lived with her. For years I lived under a cloud, only I never knew it. The clouds have parted and I see. See what? My purpose. I never had one before. She couldn't see that. She did everything she could to destroy it. She even took my peridot. Parado. A stone. Gavin gave it to me. It promotes spiritual growth. She took it before sending me here, like it will do her any good. Can't you get another one? This one was given to me by Gavin. It has special energy inside. It's irreplaceable. I could get your Parado for you. You would do that? You'd brave that nest of vipers and retrieve it for me? It's hardly a nest of vipers. That's because you can't see. But if you get it for me, let's just say that helping others is the key to helping yourself. I'd like to help myself to some earplugs. This Gavin, who is he? Gavin is the one who opened my eyes. You make him sound like a prophet. Far from it. 
He's just a man who had his eyes opened, and he helps others do the same. He was just a signpost on my spiritual journey. More like the exit ramp to your personal loony bin. I'd like to meet Gavin. You? No. No, I don't believe you're sincere. That reporter, Jeremy. I sent him on his way to Gavin, and it just upset things. It upset someone, all right. Upset them enough to kill. Perhaps he wasn't ready. Perhaps he remained closed-minded. Perhaps I should have seen that. Either way, you must find your way to Gavin yourself. Unless you can prove your sincerity. Prove my sincerity? How do I do that? Promote your own spiritual growth. If you don't do that, your eyes will remain forever closed. Spiritual growth. I'm the only spirit around here and it's never done me any good. Madison told me she gave you a key to her apartment. A key? No, she didn't. She told me she did. Well, she's lying. She hates me, so she wouldn't give me anything. You understand? I'm not sure I do. That's all right. Maybe you're not supposed to. Well, thanks for your time, Mrs. Haynes. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Stop by any time. Looks like a cleaning rotation chart. The handwriting is awful, but it looks like Penelope Haynes is due to have her room cleaned today. Room 12G, to be precise. Got it. Hmm, let's see if this works. I can't believe we just did this. When you're saving souls, sometimes you gotta rob a few old ladies. Oh, you again. Hi. Come in. What? Penelope mentioned a Peridot stone. Oh, that thing. She wore it constantly, believed it contained some spiritual powers or something. I should throw it away. Can I have the Peridot? Why? Penelope. Absolutely. That trinket just made the pro- The next time I think of it- Well, I better get going. Listen, I appreciate what you're doing, but please don't bother us again. We're embarrassed enough by this as it is. I'll do my best. I expect more than that. If any of this shows up in the paper, we'll deny everything. You got that? Now, Chris and I are meeting my husband for dinner, so if you'll let yourself out. Right, sure. Doesn't look like anyone's home. Got it. I'm saying maybe we should wait until he's older. I know. It's just been so long since we've gone out. We don't have to go to Le Cirque, you know. I know. One day he'll learn how to behave. One day. Look, I'll go make something for us to eat. You let him run around until he gets tired. Then we'll have the evening to ourselves. It's a date. Well, crud. I'll go scope things out. Just hang tight. Hmm. The 
numbers on this gizmo went down a bit. It now says 62 degrees. Hmm. You know, Chris, I think it's getting a little hot in here. What do you think? Should we open a door? Yeah, I think so too. So, kid, what's the skinny? <sighs> Chris, where are you going, you little monster? I got your Peridot stone back. Is this it? Yes, that's mine, all right. You actually went into that place and took it? Er, um, yes. Imagine that. I thought you were just humoring me. So, about Gavin? Oh, that's right. You wanted to see him. Well, I'm not sure you are ready, but I can certainly put you on the path. The one you seek is named Lisa Tenzin. Who is Lisa Tenzin? She's a healer. She is the one who introduced me to Gavin. I sent your friend Jeremy to her as well. I see. So where can I find her? Her office is in Midtown. Here's the address. Thanks. Well, thanks for your time, Mrs. Haynes. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Stop by any time. A street psychic, huh? Keep on your toes. This could get messy. I think I can handle a psychic. I am one after all. Just be careful is all I'm saying. Yes? Hi. Is this Lisa Tenzin? That's me. Penelope Haynes gave me your address. I was hoping I could talk to you. Penny sent you. Of course. Come on in. Please, sit. So, what can I do to help? I'm Rosangela Blackwell. A pleasure. I'm Lisa Tenzin. You said Penny recommended me. Yes, I was hoping to talk to you. I am here to help. What exactly do you do here? I work with life energy mostly. Positive energy keeps your spirit alive and healthy, while negative energy blocks it. And that's important? Think of it like exercise for the soul. Just like maintaining a healthy body, you also need to maintain a healthy spirit. Healthy spirit, right. If I was healthy, I wouldn't be dead, would I? How does it work? Through meditation. That's something I can offer you. Me? Do you think I need it? I can tell that your spirit is weak and could use my services. What would cause that? In your case, I'd say it was a recent tragedy. Something happened to you recently, didn't it? Something that affected you deeply? Someone I know has recently died. And you were close? He's someone I knew a few years ago. I just found out about it. I see. Say no more. Being confronted with death, any death, makes you confront your own mortality. If you aren't careful, it can generate negative energy that damages the spirit. You aren't buying this crap, are you? But if you like, I can help you get better. My spirit is weak. How? Something is blocking it. It can't function and flow like it normally would. So how can you help me get better? Your blockage is strong, but not insurmountable. I can meditate tonight on the problem. That way the best course of action will be revealed to me. If I asked you to do this for me, what then? It takes a great deal of spiritual energy to meditate on this kind of problem. I need to light a special candle in order to replenish it. So I will need to charge you $200 for the service. Then we can create an energy work plan. Huh. And you doubted her sincerity. I am going to have to think about this. Of course, there is no hurry. Did a Jeremy Sams come to see you? I wouldn't tell you one way or the other. Like any healer, I believe in confidentiality. Jeremy is dead. I'm sorry to hear that. 
A death often brings us in contact with our own mortality. No, it's not that. There's no confidentiality if he's dead, right? There are other worlds than these, Miss Blackwell. Yeah, we know. Thanks for listening, Lisa. I'll get back to you about fixing my... problem. Of course. Have a good night. What did I tell you? A blocked aura. Do I really have a blocked aura? How would I know? For that matter, how would she? Because maybe she's a real psychic. I'm pretty sure they exist. I am living proof. I don't know anything about auras, sweetheart, but I know a phony when I see one. And that woman in there? A bona fide phony. So what am I then? Beats the hell out of me. Hmm. Hi, you've reached Jeremy Sands. Please leave a message. God, that's disgusting. Is Jeremy's phone really under all that? Only one way to find out. You gonna help or what? Being dead means I don't have to pick through garbage. It's one of the perks. Right. Found it. Jeremy better appreciate this. Yes? Hi, it's me again. Oh, hello. Do come in. Please, sit. Lisa, I found Jeremy's phone. It was outside, in the trash. It's a public street. So he was here? He might have been outside. I cannot say. I know you spoke to Jeremy, Lisa. Why are you lying to me? Lying? What makes you think that? Jeremy told me. Didn't you tell me he was dead? Whatever he told you, it's not true. I never spoke to anyone named Jeremy. I think this interview is at an end. It's very clear that I will be unable to help you. Your mind is closed off. You aren't seeking help. You only want to destroy. What? No, I, I only want to... Your very presence is damaging the aura of peace I spent years trying to create. I insist that you leave. And I also insist you give up this line of inquiry. Give up? That's not an option. Not for me. Nevertheless. My friend came to see you, and then he was killed. You can either help me, or you can get in my way. But one way or another, I'm gonna find out what happened. I'll be in touch. Smooth exit. Whatever. Let's just get out of here. Come on in. Oh, hi, Rosa. Make yourself at home. We've met Penelope. Oh, you found her? How's she doing? She's interesting. Interesting's the word. I could only understand half of that crap she spouted. Yeah, she's a bit out there. She thinks she's found something meaningful. Has she? I don't know. Maybe it doesn't matter. I met Lisa Tenzin. Lisa? That's right. Lisa. I almost forgot all about her. I only just met her. I met her through Penelope, like you. Crazy, isn't it? Who knew how big this was? That's why we need to break it wide open, you see? I don't. No. Come on, Rosa, you see them on every street corner. These phony psychics, these rip-off artists. They say they can see auras or even talk to the dead. Imagine that. But it's all a lie. Everyone knows that. Or do we? Why do people keep going to these places? There's something beyond this. Something incredible. I'm so close. Jeremy, I've got something to show you, but before I do, could I see your phone? What, this? Yes. Now take a look here. I don't get it. You've got the same phone as me? No, Jeremy. It's your phone. No, it's not. I've got mine right here. I called you, remember? I don't know how you did that, but that's not your phone. This is. You lost it outside of Lisa's. It was in the trash can. That's impossible. I called it. It rang. It's yours. I... No. No, no, no this, this, this is a trick. Jeremy. No! no just, just when I'm getting close, close. you're no, trying to, to confuse, confuse me. me. You're, you're trying, trying to make me forget. Forget, forget my, my appointment. appointment. Appointment? Yes, at the High Line. I'm meeting with someone who will explain everything. I'm going. Don't try and stop me.
Jeremy? I was here. This is me. I was standing right there. Then I heard a pop, and then, then I was calling you with a phone that couldn't exist. Somehow, I just knew you were the one who could help me. Like I said, it's what we do. Could you tell us who you were meeting here? I was meeting a man named Gavin. Lisa arranged it. I've heard stories. People change around him. They destroy their lives, sometimes even die. Die like I died. Jeremy, I'm so sorry. No, no, it's okay. I don't know why, but I feel good. Relieved, even. You'll find him, won't you? You can take over? We'll find him, Jeremy. This won't happen to anybody else. Thank you. I'm ready. Jeremy, it's time. This is incredible. All this time, I never imagined. This is your life now. This is my life now. Not quite the village I, is it? Beats writing book reviews. Um, so I guess I should just... Yeah, the light. Just go through it? Just go through it. Well, he's gone. You okay? Sure. Nothing an entire bottle of wine won't fix. Well, you know what they say. Bacchus knows best. Not bad for a night's work? I guess. We still don't know how or why Jeremy was killed. That's not really our problem, is it? Maybe. It's just kind of personal this time. Yeah, I get it. Look, you get some sleep. You might feel different tomorrow. Yeah, you're right. It's been a long night. Joey. Yeah? The old man at the nursing home. Who is he? Get some sleep, Red. Was revealed to be Jeremy Sams, a reporter at the City Post newspaper. No suspect is in custody yet. The police issued a statement to say that their investigations are continuing and advise everyone to avoid the High Line after dark.